Welcome back to the Paddling Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessories, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. And the 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. All right, ladies and gents, it is Bass Kayak and Beer's time. I'm spilling my beer all over the place. I got lunch money on my hey. podcast today. How's it going, What's going buddy? On? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, man. Thanks for blessing the podcast, coming on to the show and talking a little bit about everything on the podcast. So I appreciate oh, man, it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you got your youngling beer with you? Yep. I put I put it on social media to see if anybody guessed, and I had a couple of people guess. Oh, you got Ryan Lambert coming to the show. Like, oh yeah, there you go. I wish Yingling well, would throw me a couple bucks, man. I'm working hard out here for him. <laughs> I was trying to get Yingling beer because you can't find it in Texas anywhere. So I went to so, a place called Total Wine. Go ahead. Uh-huh. And supposedly I asked they're it. supposed to start uh-huh. selling it. Uh, they were supposed to start selling it right after the classic, I think. They had a distributor yeah. opening up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I actually saw the distributor truck while I was driving from the Brazos River to record. I'm like, there's a sign right there. <laughs> but I went to Total Wine. I need to get stock up some alcohol. And I was like, let me get some Jungling beer. And I asked, he's like, you have any Jungling beer? And they had a big, which I posted on the Instagram yeah. when I tagged you. That big uh, poster says coming soon. It says you're like, you're like a week earlier. But man, it's, it's so good, good, man. It's so good. I love that stuff. You know, it, I got, I picked up one Texas Leaguer, kind of okay. like a Texas crab beer, so All I'm going right. to try it. But anyways, man, uh, congratulations on uh, the JT Foundation, man. I wanted to start off with that. An amazing job. Amazing. What was this? More than $74,000 race between the tournament and the auction. Is that correct? Yeah, and then we had like another like, Fifteen to 16,000 in, in just donations. I mean, the response from the community was, was insane. Did you ever expect it to be this big? No. To grab this much? <laughs> no. No, I, I, honestly, I don't even know what I expected from it. I thought, you know, let's put on a $50 tournament and, and let's see how many people sign up. Honestly, I thought two or 300 folks might sign up, and that's great. You know, I mean, I- any money you raise for something like this, goes a long way when it's uh you know kind of them funding the lab that's doing the research uh but then i thought you know i know a lot of people uh I, maybe i maybe i can make some phone calls and put together you know some some more something more than just a tournament so i started reaching out to some of my friends in the music industry and in the outdoor industry and then people started calling me and they're like i want to throw this in i want to throw that in and i mean it just it snowballed. I mean, just really kind of grew legs and, and took off. It, it was amazing. The volunteers, Erin uh, Mathis, I can't thank her enough. I can't even tell you how many fish she judged. She, I, I swear, every five minutes I was getting a message about somebody with a cracked mouth for Erin Mathis. Like we, we went back and forth with people all month long. Uh, and we had a lot of new people fishing it. So, you know, it was some, some learning and some growing pains yeah. and, and kind of stuff. But, uh, it was a ton of work. Chase Tanner, he designed our, uh, you know, the flyers and things, the media stuff that I put out. Chase was kind enough to do that for us. Uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff Malott, my partner on KBN, Dwayne Wally with Tourney Edge, you know, waived all the Tourney X fees and let us run it for free. So it, it was, I mean, it was great. It was literally the entire community coming together behind one cause. And I don't think you could find a better cause out there than, than JT. Yeah, no, it was it was amazing. Uh, just watching everybody come together and well, almost everybody just coming up and supporting <laughs> this. And yeah, <laughs> it's already, it's already taking a left turn. But Uh-oh. anyways, that's fired. <laughs> anyways, let's focus on the positive. Um, no, it was my it was amazing. It was heartwarming. I had the honor of having Jason Barofka on the show to talk about it. I didn't know that you were going to do this, but as soon as 
you know, I heard what Joe McElroy did, and when he announced it, I actually was watching it on the KBN uh, uh, Facebook page because you guys were the only ones televising it. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that's another subject. Um, so I, I was really moved by his, you know, his announcement, and then what Joe, Joe McElroy did, and I was like, that's awesome. Um, so I reached out to him. Let's say, well, let me see what I can help him. You know, bring him on the podcast. And by the time I talked to him and I had him on my podcast, um, you already had started the um, the Save the JT um, tournament, charity tournament. And so I had a chance to talk to him about it. And, you know, if you've listened to the podcast, anybody that listened to the podcast, know there was a point where you know, he was trying to keep it together emotionally and he was just overwhelmed with emotions and gratitude towards what you were doing. How do you... I mean, not just from the sense of the community outreach that everybody's supporting the podcast, um, the the charity tournament, but that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jay uh, Barofka before, you know, when the idea came out, and then afterwards, after you know everything was done, without going into details of personal things, but how do you feel about it? I mean, how how are you emotionally? So I I know Jason's family. So Jason's brother. Uh, we call him New Dave because uh, we have two Daves that are in our close little circle. One of them is David Cottrell from in Mobile, Alabama. He was part of our – we used to get a house for the national championship. And David was, Dave Cottrell was, was the old Dave, the original Dave. So then for our next national championship uh, that we did on Caddo Lake uh, down there in Louisiana, uh, David Barofka came out. So he was automatically New Dave. He was a New Dave in the house. So I've known New Day for a few years now. I had no idea that any of this was going on, you know. So New Day told us that his brother was fishing the classic at Possum Kingdom. Well, he gets up on stage and tells this story, and I'm like, how did I not even know that this, you know, that this was a thing, that this was an issue? Uh, and then, you know, Joe did what he did, and, I mean, that was just like, it's like somebody just punched you in the stomach and you could see it on everyone's face. I mean, everybody, people, my friends that were in town from Nashville, I told them about it after the awards and they were tearing up and they're like, what can we do? We'll do anything we can. What can we do to help? Uh, I mean that, that hit everybody. And I sent Jason a message right after the classic. And I was like, Hey man, I want to do something. Do you mind if I run a charity tournament or, or do something to raise some money to help you guys? And he didn't respond immediately because he was still out, you know, on the road running around or whatever. So I just took the liberty and assumed that he was going to say yes <laughs> and went ahead and, and dropped the idea on KBN. And he called me like two days later after we made the announcement. And, and we talked for probably, I don't know, two hours or more. And he really explained, you know, the series of events that led to them finding this disease and, and you know, previously there weren't any living patients that they had found the disease in like jt was like the first you know patient they could actually study that was alive you know and and they were making progress and they were finding some medicines that were helping him and and you see him i mean you see the pictures he's laughing and smiling and and he brought him on you know live on our podcast and and you know just talking about this and i've got a daughter i've got an 11 year old daughter and I can't imagine feeling like you have one shot at, at you know, at, at being able to do something for your kid. And if it were mine, I would I would bring the world down to do whatever I can to, to give her a chance. So we have this huge conversation and me and him are both, you know, just sniffling and, and blubbering bags of shit, you know, like it, it, it hits you. So, I mean, and it's something that I think any parent can relate to. But I'm like, dude, I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever I can. You know, I'm going to call as many people as I can. I'm going to share this everywhere. I want this thing to blow up. And and it did. <laughs> it really it really did. And I think we got uh, – he, he had the doctors at the research hospital. They were watching the auction live and, like, you know, texted him, like, holy cow. I can't believe, you know, what, what's happening right now. They've got, the, they've got enough money to hire – two research assistants basically to fund this research with additional people for the next year uh just from from what we did funding i mean that's 
that's it's it's awesome i can't i cannot thank the community enough it's it's great to see stuff like that when it happens no that is that is amazing just listening to you talk about it you know you get those goosebumps because it's you know it goes beyond just the kayak fishing community um but to see everybody come together and support it and leave your differences behind and you know doing what you can to to help this family out in in a situation where it's really um uncharted territory and one of the things we had talked about uh, jason and i on the podcast this is not just saving jt it's this could potentially save hundreds of kids that may be suffering from the disease not today but tomorrow or a year from now yep. i mean it's this, a this ripple could, effect for sure it, exactly it's gonna be a catalyst to not just save his life but save a lot of people's life a lot of kids life like a lot of families um yep. life and you know when you put that in perspective and look at what the you know not just you but everybody in the kayak fishing community that um participate in this it's it speaks out to what a wonderful place right now kayak fishing community is yes there is rivalries yes there's been stuff you know thrown around and said and that's always going to be that's going to happen everywhere but mm -hmm. when you everybody comes together and pulls together and does this and keep differences you know aside to help somebody in the kayak fishing community that's that speaks volume. In the grand scheme of things, I think kayak fishing is in a real unique space in its evolution. Like we're still small enough to where everybody kind of knows everybody. Everyone still relates to the same things. We're not super corporate. We're not really influenced by these, you know, huge non-endemic sponsors. And, and there's not these kind of deep seated uh, affiliations, if you will, that won't let these people talk to these people or whatever. Uh, I think we, we still are in this, this really cool spot to where all of us, we're shaping the direction that this is going and we're shaping the relationships that, that we have. Like, you know, we, we just had a house of like seven random guys stay together on the Susky from all over the country that don't really know each other at all. Yeah. But, you know, we have that common bond, like, hey, man, we're going up here to fish this tournament. Let's put together a fun house and hang out, get to know each other. You hear stories about where I'm from. I hear stories about where you're from. Like, a a kayak fishing is a real, I mean, it's a common thread, and it transcends countries. It transcends nationalities, freshwater, saltwater. If you like kayak fishing, you want to take somebody with you. You want to show somebody what you have, you know? And I think that's I, that's something I don't want to see us lose. I don't want to see it get to the point to where we lose kind of the roots of of what this is. Yeah, like you mentioned, it, it, we have a unique opportunity, being that it's still in its infancy. Um, and uh, talking in the in the pre recording, uh, something that besides from all the sins we're going to talk about, I wanted to give you a chance to, for you to talk about some of the stuff we were talking about in the pre-recording which is you know people coming together and recognizing you know the shortcomings and fixing them and um doing things not just for their own interest but the kayak fishing community share some of what you expect or you hope the kayak fishing community grows in in the way that it should grow so i think i think for a long time you know we that you know there were these pages like these members only pages like that were supposed to be like for feedback uh you know to kind of help help point out things that could make a difference to make an organization or a tournament trail or something better if you don't if you don't take that feedback then you're not you're not trying to grow if you are constantly you know ignoring or blocking or however you want to look at it uh, the feedback that your customers are giving you, you're not growing your business, and in turn, you're not growing this sport. So I, I think delivery has a big part of it. I think some some feedback is not delivered well, so I, I feel like that that determines on how it's received by you know mm -hmm. by the end user. But I think like if like there was a great thread on KBN yesterday about uh, BASS, for instance and it was very well worded and it was very well delivered people's responses hey if you did this this and this this tournament trail would run 10 times better 
Like these are the things we would like to see changed. Uh, from an organizational standpoint, I don't mean to pick on Bass, for instance, but that's just the most recent thing that we've seen. Uh, they are lacking. Their numbers are falling off. And, and this is the anglers telling them why. Mm -hmm. So if you're that organization, don't ignore it. Don't continue doing things the way you're doing things. Take that. That's that's free feedback. You know, people pay money. Companies pay money to have guys break down and analyze where they're missing a market. This is where you're missing your market. So so correct those things. I want to see Bass succeed myself. Yeah. I think they they have the opportunity to bring more attention and more sponsorship dollars than anyone else. Hobie is excellent. Hobie is excellent, but Hobie's a kayak manufacturer. They mm -hmm. don't have ties to all these non-endemic sponsors. There's not people that are calling Hobie. Clorox isn't calling Hobie. Like, I'll give you half a million dollars to let us title sponsor this thing. That's not a thing that happens. In Bass, it is. Bass has the connections. They have for 50 years. So, I mean, for them to succeed, we all succeed. So, I mean, they. I want them to take that feedback and grow. And I think that's something that that was missing for a long time in the sport. Luckily, you know, and I give AJ all the credit in the world. AJ was a tournament angler. AJ stepped into to the BOS and he ran it as a tournament angler. He knows what you want. He knows the treatment that you want, the communication that you want. And I think that's why they've been so successful. While other trails are struggling, they're putting up record numbers. I mean, that's the proof is in the pudding. That's what my, that's what one of my old instructors used to say in college. She was an English lady. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. And I mean, that's, that's exactly what it is. You can look at the numbers, you can look at the success and you can see who is listening and who is not. And that's a good point. Cause I've heard you on your podcast and I think it makes total sense. Jeff Mallet brought some great points a lot when he was on my podcast about three weeks ago. And I've echoed those sentiments as well on Paddle and Finn. Uh, we had a debate on the uh, OG show with Brian and Jay Randall. And obviously, we went to the part where we're like, okay, somebody has to play devil's advocate. Because otherwise, it's going to be a bashing on um, bass. <laughs> um, and, and my point of about it is you can't just rely on the glitter of your name and think that everything's going to, everybody's just going to, you know, go crazy over it and ignore the other things and there's some shortcomings and we hope like i mentioned i think you and i speak the same way it's not that any of us is hating on bass we want bass to be involved i grew up watching bass on sunday mornings <laughs> you know with my tackle box in one hand and my rod in the other and i was like six years old i loved it it was awesome to I took part in the Bass Nation Kayak Series in Lake Fork this year. Mm -hmm. And there is, yes, it was a great feeling to be part of Bass Nation and fish it. I was like, oh, man, this is what I used to watch on TV, obviously in a kayak, not in a glitter ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but overall, although I think Patrick Malone um, and by the way, well wishes to the Malone family. Um, hope everything um, comes out well with uh Patrick Malone, I don't want to go into details because that's, I don't think, you know, although it's on social media, but he's battling um, with something. And so if you're able to support the Malone family in any way, um, go check out the, the page. I think Dwayne Wally is posted it on the Bass Nation kayak page. So, yeah, anyways, it's on ABN back. as well, yeah, too. We, we shared it there as well. Yeah. So help out if you can, if you're listening. But Patrick Malone, going back to that, did a great job. Um, so did Dwayne Wally. But yes, you can see on, you know, as a structure, there are things that are missing that it's more like we're, it's more like we're kicking the tires on this to see if it's worth it versus we're fully invested and we want to grow the brand. We want to grow the community and we want it to take it to a higher level. That's that to me is the difference. And we all hope that those things turn around. You know, we're you know, let's let's give it the due respect that it deserves. I feel like that's probably a lot of people's frustration is because you you have two big money tournament entities. You have BOS and you have BASS. BOS is running things super smooth. They're communicating. They're having lot you know weigh ins that are filmed and very well spoken, put together indoors. You know, <laughs> white tablecloths, big backdrop, like yeah. it looks professional. And they are on the water 
during the tournaments, you know, covering it with media. And I think that's a big part of this too. Yeah. And and we can get into this later. Uh, you know, I told you I wanted to speak about where I saw things going. That's, that's something I want to touch on later. But Bass, I feel like, came in and they're like, all right, we're going to come in three steps behind Hope. Like you, you have the you have the formula. You see how to be successful. Yeah. Why not just duplicate that? Why not? I mean, if you're not going to do it better, at least do it the same. <laughs> you you yeah. can do it. And I feel like a little bit of that. I know when when all this stuff started, I volunteered to to literally to help Bass to to point out. You know, you can do this, this, and this, and this is how to be successful. And they're like. I guess there was some concern if I was tied in with MLF because I've got some friends that that fish the the major league fishing circuit. I don't know. I don't know the the long and short of it. Ultimately, uh, I think Bass just kind of contracted Dwayne Wally, who runs Tourney X, which is a great app. It's a great tourney management app, but mm -hmm. that's not a tournament director. That's not an MC. That's not a hype man. Like to, to be bass, if you look at if you look at bass, the classic, if you look at the elite series, what do they have? They have commentators, they have personalities, they have people that get the excitement going. And I think it, if you don't have that, then you're missing a big piece to the puzzle. That's AJ's job on the Hobie side. You know, mm -hmm. AJ's job is to engage the anglers pre, during and post tournament. You know, that's that's his role in all this. And it goes beyond just being a tournament director. Anybody can look and see if the mouth is closed and where the tail crosses the line. Like that's that's okay to to confirm those things. But as far as getting getting people engaged, uh, I think that is a big part that's missing. And I think any tournament trail, I don't care who it is, start up or if it's been here for ten years, you have to have that piece. You have to. That's a good point. So going back to what you mentioned that you want to talk about, where do you see it going? Where do you where do you think it should go? Uh, just the kayak fishing community itself, not just bass. So I I think that we're I think I definitely think we're heading in the right direction. I, I like seeing the higher entries. I like seeing the higher payouts. Of course, um, the the more money, the bigger the number on the checks the more attention it's going to draw from outside. And I don't just mean anglers. Obviously, boat anglers are looking at this stuff, too. Bass boat guys are like, whoa, that guy just won 10 grand for a regular trail stop on a kayak? Like, I could do that. And that's what we want. I want those boat guys thinking I can do that because then they'll come out here and they'll contribute to the pot. <laughs> then we'll be winning 12 grand because you got a bunch of boat guys thinking they can catch, <laughs> catch fish out of a kayak, too. Um, I think that's part of the growth is the numbers part, but I think also the media coverage. And that's, uh, yeah, I've been talking to Jeff about this, a couple other entities. I think that we have to bring in some kind of, of live coverage, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it be camera boats on the water or I don't think right now that, that we can afford as a, as a sport Uh, to outfit these kayaks with signal boosters and have live feeds uh, like you would want. I think maybe we can supplement things with commentary on the water, similar to what uh, like KBBBBBT does. Um, they they do like you know they'll do these like these nine hour these nine hour live feeds, but. But you have to have you have to have good signal. Honestly, I mean, I, you have to have good signal. You do on the water for this stuff to work. You have to have good signal for the commentators. But I think that it's going to move to a format more so like that. I think in the meantime, stepping stones like if you could have a person on the water, one person, a cameraman with a signal booster that is sending the feedback to a guy on a mixing board who has commentators there. Like, I think the cheap way would be to do that. And then whoever's in the camera boat runs around to as many anglers as he can get throughout the day. I think that'll be step one. Step two, I think, would be multiple feeds, and you can go from angler to angler, select your feed on who you're going to comment on. Um, and then ultimately, I think if we ever get to this level where we have these non-endemic sponsors putting up some cash, You can have live feeds in every kayak. You click on so and so's, you know, their live feed, and it goes to their GoPro, and you can see what's happening, you know, with them in the boat, 
throughout the day. Uh, that's that's my prediction. I don't know. It could be wrong. It's happened before, but that's where I'd like to see it go. <laughs> no, but that that's awesome. That's that's a good idea. I think the closest we've came to that was Five Live, and Again. I thought, yeah, I thought it was gonna. I mean, Phase One, Phase Two was supposed to come this year. Phase Three, I don't know what happened. I haven't talked to Scott Butchers. He's, he was on my podcast last year when we talked about Five Live. I was excited about it. I thought, man, this this could be something. I didn't necessarily think it was gonna, you know, um, take over the sport or, you know, um, where it was gonna be like the main tournament. Um, uh, how do you say this? The the main tournament um, setup instead of the live tournament. But right. I thought it had the potential with like, man, being, this being live streamed, this guy, and it was short, it was two hours, and those guys were putting up five fish in two hours, which blew my mind. I was like, yeah. heck, I, I struggle eight hours to put five fish. I don't know how the <laughs> hell they do it. And I know they were each on their own honey hole and whatever, but it's still entertaining. Uh huh. Um, Again, with anyway. that was the, the cell signal part. You know, some of those anglers had, had, sketchy cell signal cutting in and out uh but i know i, I remember scott and, and duke westcamp had some some setup some rig with a signal booster and a fancy camera i want to say it cost like eight thousand dollars and it was not waterproof but <laughs> but you could stream from pretty much anywhere <laughs> yeah right but and that's what i'm saying like to to be able to rig something like that up would be so costly if you did it in a two-day tournament and let's say a tournament series did have enough sponsor dollars to be able to afford something like that. If you even did it on the top 10 going into day two, something to just, you know, keep it going throughout the day that people can get more of an interaction outside of refreshing the tournament leaderboard. And I'm not saying people don't like watching a tournament leaderboard. They do. But if I ever go live on KBN or I roll up on Ewing Minor when he's crushing them or Joe McElroy in in possum kingdom there's there's a huge engagement people want to see like yeah. what these anglers are doing right at that moment they want to see how they're catching these fish what are they sitting on you know and they're trying to figure the puzzle out too at home like is the wind blowing is the current going to change like you know they're trying to figure out what's going to happen and i think that's a big piece that we're missing right now and i would think companies not just kayak fishing companies rod companies real companies um would want that like hey i want uh jody quinn uh on my kayak i want him you know to be on the water and be live stream and people will say hey that's my kayak i mm -hmm. or he's using my rod or he's using my reel my line you know companies would definitely i think get invested in it's just working out the logistics of it and trying to find out you know where where the money's gonna come and how it's gonna be distributed. But I think there's a formula there that can help out, that can definitely work. For the companies that are in fishing right now, uh, the big companies that, that have you know pro bass boat guys that they sponsor, they're used to a different amount of marketing. We have some amazing anglers in kayak fishing. I mean, super skilled anglers in kayak fishing. A lot of them, do not market themselves they yeah. don't engage on social media they don't push themselves they're not constantly putting out content that's the trick like this isn't i mean i'm not saying you don't have to be skilled in fishing you do you have to be competitive i feel like but a lot of this is marketing these companies want to be in the face of people all the time it's brand recognition is why people walk into you know cabela's or academy and pick up a certain pack of baits. That's why, because there's brand recognition. So I feel like a lot of the, even the best kayak anglers in the game right now, they're leaving so much on the table because they yeah. don't market at all. Yeah, that's true. And it's it, it, it needs to evolve in order to take the next step. And granted, there's some guys out there that just want to fish and hey, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. I mean, nobody's holding a gun to your head saying you have to be on social media. If you don't want to, you don't want to. But it, the community grows when kayak anglers get involved. We look at like Mike Iaconelli, a great angler, 
but he's not the one turning it up on the tournament scene. Not that he's not good. He's a great angler. But why do we know him? Because he has his live show. He's out there. He's a personality. He's loud. He's charismatic. He's putting constantly putting content out there. Plus, you know, he has had some success in the tournament. So that combination. And now, awesome for us uh, as kayak fishing community, he's coming into the kayak fishing tournaments, which uh -huh. I think it's great. Some people were like, eh, you know, he's not Ross Snyder. He's not. No, you have to understand what he's here for. He's here to promote the sport. I don't care if he wins the tournament or not, but if he's bringing in investors and companies to invest in the tournament where we can get like to me, the end game is where tournament anglers, especially the ones at the top, don't have to pay entry fees like the winnings come out from the sponsorship not their own pockets that to that's, me is the end game. that's the trick you know yeah. and, and to the guys that want that to the guys that want to be that person that want to be a a professional a professional kayak angler if that's ever going to be such a thing you have to have that marketing piece these companies are not just going to open up a checkbook if you're never going to post on anything or or do a video or you know be entertaining on a podcast or whatever like there's there's a lot of moving pieces to it and if you look at the most successful pro anglers and mike iconelli in my opinion is probably the best at at his brand and people talk about that stuff a lot but he has built his own brand that is everywhere it's everywhere it's everything he touches that guy has, he's taken, uh, you know, a classic win and a couple AOIs or whatever years back, and he's turned it into, you know, just a, a massive uh, empire, really. I mean, he's, he's got it, got it dialed in, and I think he's launching a new uh, TV show here soon, if judging by the clips and stuff that I've seen. Uh, I mean, that's, that's what you have to kind of look at. As far as the longevity, there's a lot of pro anglers that aren't making any money, you know, that are broke. If you don't have that marketing piece, then then you gotta you gotta really, really hope you win every tournament that you ever win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things you want to transcend the sport. That's the key too. If mm -hmm. you transcend the sport and become more than just the face of the sport, but more like, you know, the same. Like I mentioned, transcend, you know, meaning that not just the people within the sport know you, but your face is recognized for people that actually don't even follow the, the sport. Mm -hmm. That's what transcending is, and that's where the real money lies. And for that, like you mentioned, you need marketing. You you need to invest in marketing. And again, no, no disrespect to any of the guys that just want to fish. If that's what you want to do and you're great at it, keep doing it. Nobody's telling you not to do it. Mm -hmm. But that is... I think we all agree that's the next step um, in For order sure. to move this forward. So talking about a couple of things, um, Susky, you just got done in the Susky. You and I were talking about it on the um, uh, pre-recording. To me, the Susky was, and I'm being lazy, I know, the Susquehanna. I apologize. Hobie <laughs> B-O-S at Susquehanna. Yeah, I was being be lazy. Right. But it was the most entertaining tournament in the year and i know some people are a fan and i'm guilty of it of watching the big numbers for example what guillermo gonzalez joe and jody quinn did on the kbf trail in um in trinity river where they were just yeah. you know 109 and 110 that was super exciting um the kayak series bass nation kayak series championship on uh, mark pentagraph joe michael roy drew gregory um who else was there uh, just a bunch of guys just going at it nobody um, else was there it was pretty much just those three everybody <laughs> else is out there watching man but everybody to me it, it was it was exciting but it was top heavy i enjoy it when you see and you mentioned it you were one fish away from maybe um winning that tournament a lot of us were one fish away from a good check and that speaks to the quality of the fishery yeah. like that's why i mean that i i will tell you i've fished all over the country all i mean really i've, I've fished in other countries like that fishery the, the susquehanna susquehanna if you're a yankee but uh <laughs> <laughs> that fishery that's the the best as far as quality goes fishery that i've ever ever fished in my entire life 
I promise. Well, now, you, like, now you're breaking quality. my heart because you you're breaking my heart because you said that about Possum Kingdom <laughs> after you finished so, the budget. Because, well, no, I mean, but it's too different. That's largemouth. That's yeah, largemouth. That's true. Possum Kingdom showed out, and I promise you, I don't know if it'll be Possum Kingdom, but you will see one of the big ones uh, in that that general vicinity of Texas for next year. If I were a betting man. You mean a tournament, but, a big tournament, or yeah, or, oh, yeah. yeah, for real? No, it's uh, it's it's a it's a great. I was I just got back from fishing the uh, the Brazos River at the Possum Kingdom Dam, and that I mean that that Brazos River never disappoints. I and heard Boston there's Kingdom a guy that uh, I heard there's a guy that puts put some people on some big fish down there. Uh, some guy named Matthew Scott. Something, or something like yeah, that. Something yeah, something like something that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Some some yeah. guy that had hooked on his nail on the Susky or something like that. Oh my <laughs> gosh, dude! I wish you'd delete that picture. That was. Disgusting. I know. I'm like, dang, Scott, man, that's kind of raw. Don't even be sharing that. Uh, the funny the Susky, thing, man. Yeah, it, that ahead. place is that that is top notch. Especially, I love smallmouth. I love smallmouth more than anything. Uh, that that. I guess the quality overall, they manage the fishery so well. I mean, most of the fish that you're catching are 18 to 20 inches, and they hit like a freight train. I've caught a lot of smallmouth, a lot, and I have never felt any fight like that. I mean, they're just so strong. They're so strong. By the way, congratulations. You got big bass um, that uh, for the tournament, right? 20, 20, yeah, 20, 20 it, quarter, no, 20 and a quarter, right? 20 and a half, yeah, 20 and a half. I see. So that I, I don't know, man. Apparently, I've gotten good at big bass because I got big bass at Dardanelle too. Uh, but <laughs> big bass ain't gonna pay the bills, so I'm gonna have to step it up a swing, little bit. Swinging, swinging for the fences. What do you catch I, it on? If you may, if I may ask. A jackhammer. That's what I always catch. No, I know, man. <laughs> I, it is it is crazy how the quality of the bass you get it with a jackhammer. I was a the little was confused easy, today. Man. Yeah, I was a little bit confused today because I today I caught like four or five on the jackhammer, but they were all like 12, 10 inches. I'm like, this never happens. Usually, but usually there's like an 18 inch at the other side of this jackhammer. Um, it depends. So. I mean, it, it depends on what the bait fish are doing. But yeah. anytime fish are chasing bait, uh, I, I highly recommend throwing a jackhammer. Like if if it's lethargic fish or something, and they're you know, laid up in the grass or if they're looking to spawn and they're tucked up close to cypress knees or something, then, you know, flip something a little bit slower. But man, uh, nine times out of 10, I've got a jackhammer in my hand or at least by my side ready to go at any time. Yeah, it was funny because for the JT tournament, my first day fishing, it got water temperature was like 92 to 91. It was upper 90s. I mean, not upper 90s, but lower 90s. And as I'm fishing my way out, I figured I just want to hit as many spots as I can. I figured there's no way they're going to need a jackhammer unless I hit them in the nose with it. And yeah. that's what I started doing, just throwing into cover <laughs> and just speed it, just like maybe I'll hit one in the face. And I, the, the biggest one I caught, it was 21 and a half, and it was that same thing. I just I must have hit him in the face because as soon as it um, reached the bottom, boom, that thing almost ripped out of my hand. But it, you're right. It's it's one of those things where it's probably not going to work if they're lethargic unless you, like, put it right in front of them. Well, and so use it, it and was muddy like water. A yep. well, the yep. Susky was super muddy. I mean, visibility was inches maybe at the most. And that, that river's usually crystal clear. But the muddy side of the river is is where everybody was was wearing them out, and most people were throwing a jackhammer. Some people were throwing a spinnerbait, but it had to have something with some vibration so they could find it in that muddy water. But buddy, when they found it, you better hold on with both hands. When you when you messaged me earlier, I was going through my GoPro footage. Oh my gosh, man. I, I, it makes me want to drive back up there right now, just watching the <laughs> GoPro footage. Those fish hit so hard. They hit so hard. I can't wait to get back. Jody, by the way, Jody Quinn, congratulations on to Jody Quinn who won it. He won it yeah. last year. He's, he's that interview, I can't remember if it was with uh, KBN or The Reel Down, um, but he talked about. Um, using the spinner bait and i thought missy like man this is one of my favorite episodes because he really 
um spilled the juice on you know his secrets on i think he switched like the the blades on the spinner bait and how no, he it caught it. It was the trailer. It. it was the yeah. trailer on the jackhammer. He switched to oh, he switched to the jackhammer this year. Boy. It yeah. was it was the color of the trailer and it was a paddle tail. He switched to a larger paddle tail because it had more thump. And he said changing the color and to the larger profile on the tail itself is what started triggering those big bites because he said he was getting short strikes previously. Yeah. No, it was it was great. Um, just listening to Jody Quinn talk about every time he's he's interview for for a tournament, I want to listen because he really does break it down. Where you're like, God, that's a lot of information. Like all the nuances of what he does and how he changes his you know simple things. It's changing from a willow braid to a Colorado braid, even when the water clarity. And that was last year. Like water cl- clarity was not bad. It was like. Yeah, you're probably going against the green on it, but, you know, just listen to him. It's pretty awesome. Let me ask you this. Jody Quinn, mm-hmm. best angler right now? No. You really? <laughs> I like Jody a lot. Jody Quinn's the best river angler by far that I've ever met in my life. But uh, Jody Quinn has won tournaments offshore. He won, uh, well, granted, Guillermo Gonzalez um you know, took it away from him with 15 minutes left with 110 inches. But yeah, Jody yeah. Quinn did 109. And I know I was fishing close to where Jody Quinn was fishing. And he wasn't in the river. He was just on uh, fishing reeds offshore. I still, I'm still, I, and I, and listen, I love Jody to death. And I have the most respect for him in the world. He is not the best angler right now. And I'll tell you who the you, best angler right now is, is. And this may be a super unpopular opinion. It's Ewing Minor. It's this kid that I is straight you out say of that. college. <laughs> I know, dude. I mean, I know him very well. I have yeah. never seen freaking talent like this kid, man. I mean, it's just natural. It's complete. I watched him fish for hours. He was right in front of me. It's it's so natural for him. Who else? I mean, this is his first year ever, ever fishing kayak, a kayak series ever. He comes into his first event at Seminole and catches a check, goes to Watts Bar and finishes second, goes to Hartwell and wins it. I mean, Watts Bar was hell? a beating too, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's not there's not an argument to me right now. The closest th- that competitive wise, the closest that I've seen in dominance is Big Stick Hal, Brian Hal. Oh, Brian Hal, yeah. Now, this year, this year, those are one and two. Russ Snyder's. Great angler, excellent angler. He's proven himself. This year is not. It's he's not. He's not his year. It's yeah. Not, I mean, and then it goes in waves. And and Jody Queen again, excellent angler, but he's not on fire. Those two are on fire. I mean, you put a rod in their hand, spin them around in circles, drop them off on a random lake, and they're going to go beat your ass. I guarantee it. They are. I don't know why. He, I don't know how you get it. You and I, I don't know you, uh, Minor, and I would love to have him on the podcast and I'll reach Ooh. out to him. But even on the way he casts, is the kid just oozes with confidence. It's confidence his two older everywhere brothers, with him. His two older brothers, one of them's on the pro tour and the other was a hammer in the college circuit. I mean, I met his dad up there at the Susky and I'm like, dude, did you sacrifice a goat when they were born? Like, how do they have, how do you have children that can fish like this? And he's like, man, he's like, I sit on the boat with those three sons. And he's like, I'm like, how in the hell did they learn to fish like this <laughs> when I can't? I mean, and they're, they're hammers, all three of them. But Ewing, once Ewing grows into his skill set, mentally, mentally grows into his skill set, I don't ever want to fish against him, ever. I'm telling you, he's that good. I promise. No, he's good. I'm not. I And, and you're right. He's leading the Hobie BOS. My, my thought is, well, when you look at the body of work, you know, I got to give the nod to Jody Quinn just because I know he's done it on for this so long. Year, but, yeah, though. I mean, you said, yeah, you said this he's year, the yeah. best angler this year. Did I say and, this and, year? And, my bad. Okay. Oh, no, no, I'm being serious. You know, you know, <laughs> no, but, I mean, you and, I mean, the kid is phenomenal. I mean, um, and it's one of those things, where, and it's scary to think the potential, like you said, that he grows into it. Now, Granted, we were saying the same thing about Jackson Orr a couple of years ago, and Jackson Orr, I mean, still a great kid, no, no, no doubt about that. 
Um, and now he's fo- maybe he's focusing on other things. Like I don't know Jackson oh, no. on that I personal Jackson level. Orr, and I, I um, mentor like I yeah. feel like I mentor Jackson or we actually are. I have a, I have Ewing and Jackson in a group chat with us that we talk every single day. I try like, you know, I mean, we have a pretty close knit community, but Jackson and Jackson did great. Jackson was never as dominant as what Ewing is right now. He, he, he wasn't. And, and, you know, hasn't been. Uh, Jackson has fished great. He cashed checks in a lot of events. But these ones and twos, Ewing has won $18,000 already this year. Wow. I mean, wow. it's crazy. It's freaking crazy. A college kid. You know, like he didn't have two nickels to rub together. He didn't have gas to get down to the damn tournament. And now he's up eighteen grand after five Hobie events, six Hobie events that he's fished. And it's crazy. Now, nah, congratulations to him. I mean, and and again, I'm super happy for him. I think seeing new blood um, coming up to the sport is great. You know, I mean, I always would. I always like to see guys like Russ Snyder kill it and Jody Quinn, Guillermo Gonzalez, Christian Fisher. I love seeing them kill it. But to have another fresh face, another name thrown into the back, Brian Howell as well, um, is good for. I think it's good for the sport. It makes you work harder. You yeah. can't get complacent. You can't wake up every day and be like, I'm Russ Snyder's, I'm going to win. Or, or I'm Jody Queen, I know I'm going to get a top five. That's not like you have to continue to improve because there is constantly new people coming in, you know, out of left field and they humble you real quick. And that's the best part about this sport is even when you think you're on top, there's still somebody better than you. <laughs> and they, they'll, they'll yeah. show it to you real quick, real quick. How old is you in minor, by the way? Uh, 20. 20. Oh, yeah. This is a young dude. That's awesome, man. I, and it's, again, it's awesome to see new blood uh, coming up and showing out. And it's going to be exciting to see those two, Brian Howell and your minor, go at it on the TLC. Because he's still, I mean, your minor has, has put a, I mean, a stronghold on the first place. But, you know, that's what we thought last year with Jody Quinn and Russ Knight and then Drew Gregory, who only fished three tournaments the whole series, the TOC, comes out with a big win, yeah. Well, that TOC is what settles it. So TOC is yeah. double points. So you can go in there in 10th place, and as long as everybody else in front of you falls on, on their face, you can still win AOI. I mean, it's complete, and that's what I'm banking on. I'm hoping they all fall on their face. <laughs> I want to have a good shot at AOI. I'm going to try to get some good points at Pickwick and put myself in position. But, uh, I mean, ultimately, it's going to take a lot of luck to uh, have something like that take place. But those, the top three AOI qualify for Hobie Worlds, which I think is everyone's main goal. Like, it'd be cool to win an orange and black PA, but I would much rather qualify for <laughs> Hobie Worlds. So you, you scoop me into third place, and I'll be okay. Now, let me ask you this. It's a good segue to talk about the um... – and it just came out, and I apologize. I don't know the name, but there's a new kayak fishing. The world what championships. Is it? The world it's, championship, it's right? The we're, kayak we're trying bass to bass fishing world championships. Is that what it is? Something like that. I just read the the press release or whatever that was released. What are your thoughts on that? And so they did it last year. Uh, Chad Hoover and, and Eric Jackson put this thing on, and they were trying to tie it in, kind of like to the Olympics or whatever something like that yes well so they put the tournament in eric jackson's backyard literally in his backyard uh they had i think canada had a pretty good showing team wise like numbers uh there were a few guys from mexico and maybe like one or one or two other like two two or three man teams that came in so they're bass fishing in in eric's backyard on on this lake it's called center hill lake it's a deep deep clear water it's a tough fishery, especially the time of year they have the tournament. From what I understand from a Canadian competitor, they did not allow portaging uh, in pre-fishing. They said no portaging. Well, like the, the day before the tournament, they're like, okay, you can portage now. So <laughs> Eric Jackson goes out and wins the thing, portaging to some smallmouth. Um, I, it was hilarious because I think Chad Hoover caught like one fish in it like a 13 and a half inch bass in the world championship. So that was obviously, you know, a good laugh for everybody. Like the Godfather guy fishing uh, goes out in the world championships and, and catches a 13 inch fish. Um, I think there's not a lot of seriousness to it. Last year they did like a parade 
and it was like six dudes in the back of a pickup truck driving through town and like the townspeople are looking at them like what are y'all doing like they got flags and stuff there's like 10 people outside they're like what is going on here it was i think it was a lot of hype and not a lot of of delivery um and they they're pushing it as representing the you know representing the u.s or whatever i think there was some controversy on who the representatives were that they had chosen to represent the U.S. mainly, mainly just one person is what yeah. the host that I've seen. I don't. You can't. Guillermo Gonzalez, Russ Snyder's, Jackson Orr, like you can't argue. Cody Milton, you can't argue yeah. with those dudes. Drew Gregory, they're hammers. They're hammers everywhere they go. There's nobody gonna argue with that stuff. And honestly, Ron Ron Champion has cashed a lot of checks and a lot of events. And there was the whole Hobie thing on was it lake fork uh that that was yeah the, the big controversy sure, yeah. been in the hog trough or whatever I, that's what people are pissed off about and i can see it i see it from that mm. you know from the outside looking in i definitely see why people are up in arms like you know th- if this person has a, you know a question around them or whatever why are they representing the country ultimately he was never prosecuted for anything he was never banned from any organizations Hobie stood by him as far as being a representative. I'm not saying that my opinion was it wrong to do to do that. You know, was no pun intended. Was he bending the rules? Yeah, for sure, a hundred percent, a thousand percent. Hell, if nobody's going to prosecute him for it, like, did you break the law? If nobody, <laughs> nobody took you to jail, like, I don't know, I don't know how you sort that out. And and again. I feel like a lot of that is in the court of public opinion. So if nobody's going to do anything about it, then let him finish whatever the hell he wants to. I mean, that's that's my opinion on it. Yeah, I think um, – I don't know Ron Champion. Um, I remember that coming out. I did talk to a couple of kayak anglers off when I had him on my podcast, but I asked him off camera, you know, I want to know what your opinion is out of this. So I'll know. And I think a lot – the people that I talked to just looked down at what had transpired and didn't have sure. the highest opinion of yeah. what, and I'm not going to say names cause it was, it's private conversations, but yes, the, his name got stained, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, it's not, he has to live with that. Yeah. Like that's the, well, thing. that's the thing is it's not, unfortunate it's unfortunate for the was, sport. I should say. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. That's, that's a choice that you make as an adult. Yeah. If I make a choice to, to you know try to push the boundary or push the line that's on me like it's you know that's that's my my decision and and you have to deal with those consequences yeah and again i don't know ron champion i i not gonna talk bad about him i like i said it's it's one of those things where i like to form my opinion based on what what are facts and mm-hmm. none of like i said unfortunately for the sports there was one of those kind of loopholes where it's more of an ethics standpoint, I think, than a rule standpoint. And that was one. That was yeah. my thing. You know, when all this stuff came out, and I hate to beat a dead horse and rehash yeah. all this stuff, but that was one of the things. Is you know the the rule about about sportsmanship and ethics. That is a rule. That's a written rule. And to me, that was the only rule that you could you could really point the finger at. There wasn't a rule against how you position your hog trough and how much pressure you put on your hog trough. None of those were rules. But like sportsmanship, ethics, gaining an advantage, that's where that's where it was kind of called into question for me. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and it wasn't like an accident. You know, it was something no, 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 that no. was done on purpose. And it went on for a yeah. year. I mean, everybody yeah. went back through the pictures on Tourney X. That's one of the great things about Tourney X. You can go back as far as you want to and see pictures from all these tournaments. And I think that brought about a lot of attention to, to this issue. And you saw the rules change. You saw the rules yeah. change across the board in every organization. Uh, and I think if, if you inspire a change like that, clearly something, you know, something's going on there. Like that wasn't the, the best thing to do. You know, overall, I think Hobie's moved on from it. I think Ron's moved on from it. Um, and, and now, you know, we continue down this road, but I don't think, I don't think every time his name comes up, people should throw up another post. I mean, it's happened. It was dealt with move on. 
Yeah. But, and at the same time, it's one of the things where consequences of your decisions, you know, you have to live with it. But like I said, it's, you know, just it's the same way you decide to do something. Somebody is going to have to make the decision to remind you that you did it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so for sure. You have to live with it. I, I do. Um, it's tough for AJ to handle that. And I think he handling the best. There's no really like that's another thing. It's like, well, it, it's. it's I'm not going to say it's an unfair position for AJ to be with because that's, as a tournament director, that comes with the territory. That comes with your work. You're going to have to make those the hard decisions and handle it. And there are going to be people that are going to say, well, it should have been handled better, should have, or, or harder, or, you know, whatever the opinion is. I give props to AJ for the way he handled it. I mean, at this point, it's just, there's no need to blow it out of proportion. There's no need to stain the sport. Let's just handle it in-house and from deal his with it. standpoint that he yeah. had a lot of different factors you know i mean aj aj and ron had a long relationship and friendship so obviously he's looking at things uh probably more open-mindedly than than people on the outside that are just you know trying to burn him at the stake uh but also aj has hobie corporate that that is weighing in on what they're willing to go through as far as prosecuting somebody. You can't just go out and slander somebody's name, you yeah. know, as a giant corporation and, and expect there not to be ramifications. So if they're going to prosecute somebody, it's got to be airtight. There can't be any wiggle room. Like you're not going to risk spending millions in a court case. So there's a lot of factors that went into that. It's not like it was just AJ that woke up one morning and yeah. was like, he's free. You know, wipe the, wipe the slate. We're good. That's not how, that's not how, unfortunately, that's not how any of the sport works. It, it can't just be one person's opinion that, that makes a difference on anything. And that's why I think the way he handled it was the best way. You know, he's this, a professional. He, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's professional. a true professional Consummate in professional, everything yeah. that he does. Yep. We're very fortunate to have him in the community, not to give too much praise to one person. Uh, but it really is. We're fortunate to, to you but know. But if you were going to build a statue, if yeah. you were going to build a statue, make it of AJ. I, you know, this is this is a perfect segue because I wanted to ask you this. Who do you think right now Mount Rushmore or kayak fishing, not just competitors, but people that have elevated the sport, made a difference for the sport? Who, who would you be on your Mount Rushmore? Um, I, I think uh, AJ, obviously, you'd have to put yeah. AJ there. Um. I think you'd have to put Chad Hoover there. Whether I agree with him or disagree yeah. with him, um, I think as far as getting the ball rolling on this stuff, he did it. You know, he he was the guy that that kind of that really got it off the ground, and and thankfully, p other people came in to yeah. to make it better. But you know, he did he did it. He did it good. Yeah. So, um. I think you'd probably have to put Christine Fisher on there. I think that yes. there's not a person that has more reach uh, right now because, I mean, companies companies pay attention. Like if I go out, <laughs> if I go out and catch an 11 pound bass, not as many companies care, you know. But <laughs> if Christine goes out and catches an 11 pound bass, a lot more companies care. Like she has yep. a, a a very niche demographic of being a you know young tall blonde female that can fish her ass off like she's very good at what she does yeah. and i think that really is a huge draw for a lot of people and i met a guy on the susky this dude rolls up in a jet boat and he's like you know christine fisher <laughs> i was yeah. like yeah met her met her a time or two bud what's up he's like i watch your youtube videos all the time like this creepy old man i watch your youtube videos all the time and i'm like see that's the reach that I will never have. Yeah. Like, this old dude ain't going to be sitting around on the couch eating Cheetos watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> like, I promise. Like, that ain't going to happen. So I think she has to be there. And I think Drew Gregory has to be there. You know, Drew, when I started when I started kayak fishing um, with, with kayak bass series, Terry Manley, the first KBS event in Astor, Florida – I remember Drew Gregory was down there and, and Jamison Redding was filming him for Jackson Kayaks and Z-Man. And I was like, man, that is the coolest shit ever. Like this dude is, he's down here just shooting commercials, fishing. This is what he does for a living. Uh, and he had the river bassing event and, and, you know, he got to design kayaks for Jackson. 
Uh, I think those those are the people that I would that I would put up there as, as credit for getting us to where we are right now. That's a good list, solid list. I'm glad you mentioned Chad Hoover because I hated to go into that debate with you. I don't give a shit, man. I told you, you can, you can, you can ask me about anything. I don't care. We've had our beef. Uh, we don't really talk anymore. <laughs> so I talked to Christy. I talked to his wife. I mean, I check in. Like, yeah. you know, he's he had COVID or whatever for my cast. Make sure they're okay. Make sure she's okay. Uh, you know, yeah. she had had some some health problems. Turns out Christy's had COVID three times. She ain't scared of it. Yeah, like, wow. I don't care. That's that's one more one more drop in the bucket. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think I mean Chad has been a trailblazer, um, for the sport, and I can see a guy with his personality how you feel like whether wrong or right that you have to protect this and you have to be kind of like you have to run it you know i got it to this point i have to protect it it has to be run this way and i think jeff malott touch on it um not specifically talking about him but mentioned you can't be bigger than the sport you can't be bigger than the kayak fishing community not that i think he intended it that way I, I give the benefit of the doubt i've talked to chad hoover um i have no problem with him i think he's a great guy um He does have a strong personality. He has a big ego, and I'm not saying it as a character flaw. That's just the nature of, of his uh, personality. I'm not uh -huh. criticizing it. I probably would have a big ego, too, if I took an un unknown sport to the high set he's taken it. So I can't judge, but I think that he has made some changes in the way he has matured, and he has... He has done some things better. He has for um, sure. For he's board. not. Yeah. He, he's yeah. not as active on social media, yeah. like addressing people that kind of step on his toes. That was one of the biggest yeah. things. Is like you can't talk bad to your customers, and I think that that you know that affected a lot of the way things transpired over the last few years. But I mean, KBF as a whole has improved. They yes. care more about the anglers. They're promoting the anglers. They're doing more at the events to like make it more hospitable, if you will, like more of a fun time. Out of everything that's happened, I think that everyone has gotten better. They've elevated. Yeah. And I think no matter what anyone's opinion is of whoever else, that's what we all wanted. That's what everybody wanted. So, you know, if we if we shed a few tears and broke a few glasses, whatever, but it's getting better. And that's the point of all this. Kind of cliche, but it says you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. So you're right. I, I love breaking uh, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, and I, I for for those people out there, and I've seen it. I, I had some somebody on your show, and I'm not criticizing them. Somebody on your show once said, "Oh, I don't fish." I think it was that interview you had with Conrad Benetti and someone else, and he said, "I don't fish Chad Hoover events." Not the first person I've heard say that, yeah. and I'm not criticizing. For those that. S s have that mentality if you have if you don't like the way kb office run the format and everything i can understand you're not fishing mm -hmm. it. if you like it but you're not fishing it because you don't get along with chad hoover i will say this about the kbf tournament kind of it's out there and it's very different from hobie bos you can give credit for for them sticking outside the box and again this is somebody that took the sport to uncharted territory which is national levels and kind of try and reinvent and see how it grows and there are going to be mistakes that be made because nobody else has made i mean for all the great job that aj has done there was a blueprint set out that aj could benefit from it and i'm not taking anything away from what aj has done because so the has funny part seen, is it was yeah. terry manley it was yeah. terry manley that started the first national trail And people forget about that because KBS yes. was so short-lived. But that was the first big national trail pulling big sponsors. But because it wasn't successful, everybody's like, oh, you know, then they look next. Then it was KBF. I remember when KBF tried to buy KBS at Gunnersville at the Classic. Like, there's a – I wish someone would write a book of the history, the real history of kayak fishing and how all this stuff has has domino effect i'm one of the guys that will not fish a kbf event i won't i did up until like two and a half years ago and finally so many things happened that i'm like this this is pointless like i'm tired of dealing with you know bs and drama and eight o'clock yes. lead changes and and whatnot and I, that's why i quit luckily it's improved it has improved it has. Then, but i'm i'm still I'm good where I'm at. We're going to keep on rolling with Hobie. They've 
elevated with the big money tournaments yes. and and running it smoothly, and that's that's all I wanted out of it. So, you no, know, and and Hobie has super um, super um, surpassed is the word I'm looking for a KBF drill, and that's no knock on KBF drill or Chad Hoover. It's just the way it is. KBF uh, fell into that middle ground. Yeah. They didn't even try to do the big. They had the pro series. They just quit. They gave it up. Yeah. They're like, all right, Hobie's got it. Like, we'll we'll sit back here in the in between the local stuff and in between the big money yeah. stuff. There's plenty of market there. There's room for everybody. No, and it, and it's good. And I think K, what KBS does bring to the table, it brings the average Joe a chance to be part of the national championship. And Jay Randall and I were debating about it. And finally, Jay Randall says, you know, you're kind of right. And not to gloat on my point of view or winning that argument, but I, my argument with the KBF national championship, and I know you've had your thoughts. I've heard your thoughts about it. Um, <laughs> and they're pretty funny and you're not wrong, but I think the, the KBF national championship, what it does, it gives the average Joe that might be a great hammer. It just doesn't have the time. Family work doesn't have the time to go fishing, but he's a great angler. It gives him, you know, that that puncher's chance to go into the national championship and take down Russ Snyder, take down um, Jody Quinn, and that that brings people into the sport. I think more than anything, it brings other people that are not because when you look at the tournament scene, that's a very small percentage. You know, there's oh, a very yeah, small sure. percentage of Drew, Drew Gregory's, Russ Snyder's, and all that. We mm -hmm. can't just rely on them to grow. We need the masses to come in. And I think that's what the national championship does. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. It's 500, 600, I don't know how many people fishing it. I wish it, they but wouldn't it does, call it yeah. the national championship. Yeah. Like, that's the most offensive part is, like, yeah. if you look at the national championship of college football, does every college team show up and play each other on that day? Hell no. The, the best ones show up and, and play each other. Like, but, and there you're has right. to be some kind of slimming down. I mean, there doesn't have to be. I don't give a shit. It's not mine. You yeah. run it how you want to. But that's where I think a lot of people are like, it's more of a national open than it is yeah. a, a national championship. And no, you, you're absolutely right about that. I'm, I just think of the people that are like, hey, man, I got to go to a national championship and fish against Ron Snyder. You're probably going to lose, but hey, you got a chance to do it. Fun, you know, the, yeah. the, the event itself before COVID, granted, COVID changed everything. But yep. man, we used to go up there and we would, you know, 12 of us, we'd rent a house. We would, you know, go to the check ins and all sit together and, and laugh and joke. And, and you see people that you don't see all the time. You know, it's people from all around the country, guys from yep. California, guys from Utah, Washington, Arizona, Texas, that you didn't get to see a lot. So it was kind of a, homecoming sort of like everybody got together that's the yeah part it was that more I of a like fest it. yeah it was more like a celebration of the sport than a national championship i think yep. to me their national championship is their 10 which i see i i know you often refer as their 15th or 12th or 10 ish the number <laughs> fluctuates it all depends on who, need, who needs yeah. to be in that, that year. yeah um, but i agree i think that is the elite of yeah. kbf that's the elite and I'm glad they finally took the online aspect out of that. Like, you yeah. can't have dudes honey hole fishing going down here to be your elite angler. There's nothing elite about that, man. Come on. Like, make them work. Like, make them work. And that's and that's the beauty of the TOC is if you don't bust your ass, you are not there. There's not one person that got there by accident. None. Not a, not one of them. If you qualify for the top 50 of TOC, um, and it's the top 50, right? Like Stop that's, 50, yeah. yeah, then you're, you, I mean, you're a good angler. You're, you're accomplished angler. Not, mm -hmm. you don't, oh, if you, you don't, walk around you don't stumble room. in there. Yeah. You don't no, stumble. If you walk around 50. that room and you look at the faces that are sitting in there, every one of them's taking money from you at some point. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, I mean, that's just, that's how that is. I mean, it is, it is a, it is a collection of hammers from around the country. Usually Guillermo, uh, Joseph Sanderson, Scotch, like those are a lot of the Texas names that you see in the crowd. But I mean, you can't argue with any of those. Like, who hasn't lost money in the state of Texas to one of those three? Nobody. Nobody I know fishing I have. a bass tournament. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Nobody fishing a bass tournament has not gotten beat by one of them. So I, I, that's why I think that that's such a unique setup and kind of disappointing on the bass side. I would like to see their conjunction classic bass nation kayak championship i'd like to see it a little more elite i'd like to see it whittled down to 
yeah. you know, to where, and it doesn't have to be 50. You don't have to go completely based off Hobie's numbers, but let's say you did a top 100 and then you did a two day two cut to the top 50. Then you did a day three cut to the top 25. Like do something to make it, you know, where it is really the folks that are performing that are, that are in the thing. I think that would be excellent. You know, you're, you can freely take that bass. You don't have to pay me for it or anything. Just go ahead and run with it. <laughs> well, I think a, a combination of trying to appeal to the masses and having more income, and also a little bit of laziness of like, let's just do it simple. We don't. Let's not complicate our lives. Yeah, I agree. So, lunch money, Ryan. Thank you so much. I've had you for an hour. I really appreciate it. You come to the show. Uh, I've looked forward to recording an episode with you for a long time. Love what you're doing with the KBN. Love what you're doing both on the water and outside the water. Um, JT, Charity, um, KBN group page, a.k.a. The Cesspool, the podcast. The Cesspool. <laughs> you're doing an amazing job. And it's awesome to see, you know, the the reach that he has gotten and the way that you're using it, not just to for yourself, but to help out other people like the Barofka. Props to you, my friend. So thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody you want to thank? Sponsors, family members, anybody? Just take your time. Man, everybody. I want to thank the whole community, to be honest, because we wouldn't have this platform that we do uh, with KBN without the participation. We started it with like eight people, and now it's like 13,200 or something, like something crazy. I mean, the reach is out of this world. My, my, my buddy, Steve-O, AJ, Jeff, I mean, Shane Williams, my business partner in Yak Addicts, like everybody's so so tight knit and and uplifting and we've just kind of kept the ball rolling my girlfriend cam you know she lets me run around the country chasing these dreams and fish and crap everywhere my family um the dugout bait and tackle uh calcos plano z-man shimano i'm sure i'm gonna forget somebody but uh anyhow i, I just i have a blast with it stops being fun i'll probably stop doing it um but this this whole jt thing kind of opened my eyes to we can have a much bigger impact that that is outside Mm -hmm. of of just kayak tournament fishing so you're going to see a lot more of that stuff um and and hopefully you know things things smooth out across the board and everybody and, and we all benefit from it now. Thank you for having me on the podcast, man. I appreciate it. Oh, man, my, my honor, my pleasure. Um, what's it that you can say? Because I know, I'm sure you have plans not just for yourself, but the KBN. What plans do you have in the future that you want to share for KBN, uh, first of all? Uh, the podcast is growing. Uh, it's we've, we've grown to such a, a reach that now we have some... Um, new partners new sponsorship opportunities that are that are coming into play um you're you're gonna see that and we'll be probably announcing that here in the next couple weeks hopefully uh congratulations i mean i appreciate it man and ultimately we put in a lot of time we do and it's just me and jeff we do we do an episode every monday and you know we both kind of built studios in our homes and and put a lot into it and it takes you know i mean it takes a lot of time lining up guests and planning these yeah. things out and and then we have to run the freaking circus that is a group age and try to <laughs> try to keep that uh somewhat on topic um I, I think i think that uh you'll see you'll see some some big things out of out of kbn i hope that we do we're going to do more charity events and kind of giving back and hopefully you know bring a much more positive light out that uh that we have the ability to that's awesome and what about for lunch money anything new for lunch money anything uh, planned for the future that you can announce i got i got some uh not that i can announce yet i've got i got a couple big things big 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 things that are uh, on the horizon again honestly probably next week so nice so stay, congratulations again man. well deserved and, uh, and we'll see if we can hammer this stuff out there you go for those out there listening thank you for joining us and uh, again thank you ryan lunch money lambert for joining our show go check out kbn every monday for tournament recaps live at what time ryan uh 7 30 central 
Central. So go check yeah. them out live on Facebook, YouTube, right? And Twitch? Facebook, as well. YouTube, and Twitch. We're all over the place. Podbean, you Apple, you can get the podcast anywhere. Ryan Lambert, Jeff Mallard, KBN Live. There you go. Um, again, for those out there listening, if you made it this far, thank you for joining us. Um, big thank you to Douglas Rods for sponsoring the podcast. Really appreciate it. And if you're going to be on the water, please wear your PFDs. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and kayak either. <laughs> Be safe. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>